Hello all and welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. Again, I thank you for the love and support on the most recent video. If you guys didn't check that one out, make sure you do as it has kickstarted phase one of native staking on Hedera. If you have a hashback wallet, you are able to pledge yourself to a node to receive rewards as the phases uh, roll out and go through the additional steps. Of course, that video explains all of those phases in more detail when the rewards will be going live, the, how the distribution works, minimums, maximums, and the rest of it. Also, I'd like to say if you aren't subscribed and you aren't following me over on Twitter, make sure you are as there is plenty more content coming as well as future giveaways, etc. Lots of fun stuff in Hedera and crypto. Anyway, some more Hedera news today as well as uh, sort of a general market overview, which we're going to begin with. So on the crypto bubbles, majority of the projects across the board are in red territory today. Um, I think they started bleeding out towards the end of yesterday. Nothing too bad though. We did have a few days of green uh, positive territory gains, which is fantastic. Um, as I've said many times in the past, whenever we do see drawdowns like this, my general sentiment is to buy on red days, sell on green days. So we've seen a bit of a pullback, for example, in HBAR. I think we lost about 8% over the last day or so. After it did a uh, sort of nice run where it gained 10 to 15%. Um, so his H bar here, so down 8% on the day. We're still holding up 5.5% on the week though. So again, this may be a good opportunity to buy. Of course, make sure you're doing your own research into this. I personally have a long-term strategy where I average into these positions. Also see Rune down there, 10% down, 21% up on the week. Same goes for things like Quant and Chainlink, which I am buying a decent amount of at the moment, which is always um, a good play in my opinion for those interoperability solutions that are obviously aiming to plug different layer one solutions into each other. If we look at the fear and greed index though, still holding up fairly well. We're still in the fear territory, but we are at a 31. Obviously this is leaps and bounds ahead of where we were previously. If we look back to sort of June uh, and even May where we hit those lows of around six, or sorry, even more yeah, recently, it was June the 19th, we hit a fear level of six, one of the lowest levels we'd seen ever. Um, from the years of this metric being live back in 2018. So we are seeing some confidence return back to the crypto markets. Obviously that's reflected as well in us surpassing $1 trillion in market cap uh, for the whole crypto sphere. Not only that, of course, Bitcoin is performing fairly well at the moment. We're holding that $22,000 level, which is brilliant. And we did see it uh, return back up to, I think it did hit at some point nearly $24,000 um, over the last week or so, which again is showing the confidence is building back up. On the technical side, we're at a neutral um, in terms of buy indicators from the profiling on TradingView. Uh, hopefully we will continue to see a positive uptrend for accumulation of Bitcoin. We are seeing some volume of Bitcoin's return back to exchanges, which potentially could be for people looking to sell um, rather than add liquidity. So there may be some more downward pressure. Of course, we're still in a massively macro driven environment at the moment where we are looking for inflation to calm down and for the Fed to stop hiking interest rates. Uh, however, I said before, there is some solace potentially in the future coming. The majority of the market seem to be pricing in a 1% interest rate increase in the coming month or so. If we don't see a 1% increase from the Fed, that would be very bullish for markets as they would have technically underpriced majority of assets across the spaces. And we could see a small run thanks to that. Similarly, on the Bitcoin dominance chart, um, we can see it heading back down. So Bitcoin had a bit of a spike um, three days ago for the dominance sitting at just over 43.5%. Bitcoin dominance is falling again at the moment as we currently speak. And obviously that's as altcoins begin to outstrip the performance of Bitcoin. And as I said before, we are looking more and more likely, potentially we may see a bit more of an altcoin run in the coming weeks if things do go to plan, which is great. Some other news as well, many of you may have seen them, which has been affecting the markets. Obviously, Tesla has just gone ahead and sold 1 billion of Bitcoin off its balance sheet. Uh, however, the Binance CEO has basically turned around and said that is a drop in the ocean comparatively, which it really is. And obviously, Tesla um, previously in previous years and quarters, ironically, majority of their profitability has actually come from Bitcoin being on their balance sheet, as well as things like um, energy credits from the US government which has really helped their books in hard times. So potentially, again, this is a play on their end. The books some additional profit if they're having a weak quarter uh, for car sales. That may be sort of partially behind their reasoning because as we've seen before, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy are continuing to buy up as many Bitcoins as they possibly can. The different strategies by different companies. FTX CEO has come in and said the market recovery could happen remarkably quickly. Um, and obviously that's in relation to Bitcoin and the wider altcoin space. We saw that at the beginning of this week where we saw a massive amount of capital flow back into these markets. And it's, as I've said before, do what they're doing and not 
what they are saying majority of these companies uh and sort of other people around the space that are not as well informed will be telling you that cryptocurrency is dead um of course you need to believe in what you're doing and have conviction and so that's why i talk a lot about hedera because i do have a lot of conviction in hedera um, and some other of these projects however the long-term gains are to be made when you're purchasing in a bear market so bear that in mind um, if you flick across, let's look at some Q2 statistics published by Blade Wallet for Hedera. So the Hedera ecosystem continues to grow. No surprises there. I've been talking about this lots. Some key stats. Obviously, the transaction fees are remaining consistently low, averaging less than 0.0001 dollar obviously the lowest fees pretty much across all layer ones that currently exist the network averaged 33,000 active users per month so that's that's a nice increase and 555 million in funding was announced which is also brilliant to see those development funds are the largest within the layer one space and they are continuing to leverage that to their advantage to bring across new talent and developers into Hedera's ecosystem and help fully fledge out the space that we're beginning to see um, with things like NFTs and DeFi. Drop is something a lot of you may be familiar with as well. I have talked about them on the channel before as a use case for Hedera. However, there has been a new development from them. So customers can now pay drop merchants by scanning QR codes, purchase content online, tip an artist or make donations in one step. Soon you'll be able to pay for parking or EV charging frictionlessly with a quick scan download drops obviously drop is fully built on top of the hedera network and it basically enables micro payments by leveraging the low cost fee structure scalability and robustness of the hashgraph system and this is obviously a really big use case that we could see particularly be involved in web 3.0 applications think of things like newspapers where you're able to just quickly tip a, a really small amount um, of hbar in, in terms of absolute dollar value because the transaction fees are effectively almost zero um, you can do that really seamlessly and frictionless frictionlessly as they mentioned um, and this will be a big player i believe uh, across hedera particularly as things begin to ramp up which is great to see one of the major announcements so the major announcement that came out on friday was of course from source swap unfortunately as we covered in the last video they have had to delay their launch because of a mainnet integration problem they're starting to see obviously they're working very closely with the hedera team and now we know just how closely they are working because they are thrilled to announce they are actually partnered with the hbar foundation so through this partnership source swap and the hbar foundation will accelerate the development and adoption of DeFi on Hedera. So could not be more excited to announce support of Source of Swap Labs, the pioneering decks on Hedera. Through this partnership, the untiring work of the Source of Swap team and the support of the HBAR community, we're taking the DLT industry into the next generation of DeFi. So massive, massive thing to see here. The DEX leverages both the Hedera smart contract service, HSCS, and the Hedera token service, HTS, inheriting the full advantages of Hedera. This enables blazingly fast speeds with finality, low predictable fees, the end of front running, and DAO-based governance for a maximum decentralization. Recently, Hack and Club, obviously I covered that in the video, audited SourceSwap Labs, finding 10 out of 10 security scores on all contracts, and an overall rating of 9.4 out of 10. Source of Swap's vision is to be a protocol that serves as an onboarding ramp for HTS projects in emerging Web3 economy and also incentivizes bridging cross-chain liquidity to Hedera to enable maximum adoption. So far at launch, the DEX will work seamlessly with Stada Hedera's HBARX, Headstarters Org HST, Circle Pays USDC Stablecoin, Dovu's official Dovu, Tune FM's Jam Token, and Creamy's Cream Token, which can obviously be used on those games in the Creamery, which I, fo I focused on in a video previously. The Hedera Heatwave is just getting started, H Barbarians. Learn more about Source Swaps in our latest blog. So, obviously, this is absolutely brilliant news and well deserved by the team. And obviously, this, got, this will give the team a little bit more funding as well because they were fully self-funded via those nft sales so effectively the community was funding the team so they've got a little bit of a bolster from the hbar foundation now which could help continue them to ensure they are de developing and delivering the best project possible quick update as well for hbar suite so these guys are not using smart contracts to build a dex they are leveraging the hts and hscs native uh, services available on hedera so come to their attention that on july 28th there will actually be a hedera testnet reset where majority of things will be wiped. Therefore, they are delaying the beginning of their DEX audit to August the 16th. So they have more time to make sure that they got the smart nodes running and as ready as they can be for this big challenge. They're also fully transparent in where the um, 
initial funds from those token sales are going so they've just sent 65,000 usdc to halborn to secure the date here's the transaction you can also see the invoice screenshot to verify that the usdc sent went to the right eth address of this company so full transparency from tapachi and the remainder of the hbar suite team these guys are obviously also incredibly uh, transparent with what they're doing and um just goes to show as well how expensive a full security audit actually is $65,000 for a security audit of HBAR suite services just goes to show uh, how much is involved in building one of these platforms. Now, wanted to round this video off with a bit of a public service announcement. So um, many of you would have seen my videos obviously talking about how the Hedera heat wave and we're seeing NFT space blow up. And I did mention VHS tapes in one of those videos. Unfortunately, it does look like this has been a potential sort of slight rug pull. Many people that did purchase the NFTs uh, via the Discord bot in their server, server during the mint did receive them. I was one of them that received them. Um, however, they've completely pulled the plug on further development of this project. Um, so some people haven't received their NFTs. Um, and they are saying they're going to be distributing learn x tokens unfortunately obviously i've been caught up in this and lost 3000 hbar because these nfts are now effectively worthless um so i guess the, the the psa here is obviously be careful with the nft projects that you um kind of get involved with and make sure you're obviously doing your own due diligence as well there are so many of these different projects i only cover a small portion of them obviously in the early days i covered things like dead pixels which have been incredibly successful i've talked about pandas um uh, different projects as well you can see here followed by panda and then obviously creamies there's tons of nft projects in the space unfortunately this was one that i've been caught up in thought it was a sort of genuine project because they claimed they were the founder of ghost uh, sorry of um guilty panda prison gang turns out they're actually not so they pulled the wall over fairly or a few different people's eyes including myself um, and I've lost circa 3000 H bar as a result of this. Now, what I will say is any of you that did mint these NFTs, I'm not sure what the repercussions of um, NFTs on Hedera are, if they are, uh, if they are malicious actors. Um, if they are malicious actors, then I would suggest what I've done, I've actually just sent all the NFTs, the five NFTs that I purchased to a completely dead wallet. I will not be receiving any of these random LRNT tokens that they'll be distributing. If they do arrive in my main wallet, I'll be sending them straight to a dead wallet. I'm cutting my losses with this completely um, and just taking it on the chin and chalking it up to experience in this network. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only uh, project affiliated with this. I had covered as well previously hash players, which were meant to be like a web 3.0 city building thing. Um, they were meant to be airdropping NFTs to NFT holders of VHS tapes. I can only now assume that hash players are part of this wider circle of projects, which all appear to be incredibly shady, along with HBAR Hoopsies. So that's three projects there that I would now say do not touch, touch with the barge pole. They've got an incredibly bad track record and something to steer well clear of. And unfortunately, the NFT saga doesn't end here as there's been an issue with uh, hash access. So I'll jump across to that. So a recent tweet from DevPixels. Hello, everyone. We shared some information in our Discord server regarding the recent copycat scam on hash access and one step we're taking in order to curtail this in the future until more safeguards are in place. Hey, Ghost, a few things make you feel ill, like seeing others copy your work in order to dupe people out of their funds. We wanted to give an update on the scams that were recently run on hash access. Someone copied and minted images of ghosts onto a new token ID. Because hash access does not require approval in order to start selling on their platform, some people saw them and started buying, obviously thinking they were the real deal. We sent hash access an alert in order to have the duplicated account removed after learning about it. We also asked them to share info on what they plan to do in order to prevent this in the future. Hash access was helpful and responsive. They took down the duplicate account as soon as they became aware from their response to our questions the impression we get is that they will keep their platform as is in terms of approval process and see the best defense at the moment as user due diligence on token ids they are also looking forward to the development of sophisticated tools in the future that will help curb bad actors we respect their decision to run their platform as they best see fit and understand that different approaches are important to explore however in light of this we have asked them to delist ghost and ghost passes from hash access until these safeguards they are looking forward to are in place the reason for this is that we hope that if people know the ghosts and ghost passes are not available on their platform it will help protect collectors from similar scams in the future we like to be clear that we appreciate the work hash access is doing to build in this ecosystem and wish them nothing but success uh, we're all on the same team however we feel we do need to do what's in the best interest of our collectors 
and fear the chance of this happening again is high given the rising popularity of the Hedera ecosystem. So really great stance from Dead Pixels. Of course, Dead Pixels as a project themselves are incredibly credible. I've been sort of talking about them and I guess shilling them for months at this point. Seriously nice team. You've got Will, Raf, and Ray. Um, really transparent and obviously they're doing what's in their best interest. Unfortunately, this is a loophole in Hash Access's platform which has enabled this to happen. Now, the PSA rounding this all up then is that of course, as they mentioned, as Dead Pixels themselves mentioned, the rise in popularity of the Hedera ecosystem, we're, we're going to be seeing a multitude, many more of these projects where they're potentially rug pulls, they've got issues, loopholes, um, nefarious properties of this as it begins to grow, like we see on other chains. So, of course, from my perspective, I will be doing as much research into any of these projects as I possibly can. If I believe any of them have the potential to be nefarious in any particular way, I will not cover them on the channel at all. I won't even mention them on Twitter. I'll be trying to keep it as sort of tight as possibly can to protect as many of you as you can. Of course, I've been burnt by that um, VHS tapes and some of you may as well have been uh, too as part of me sort of trying to shine some light on these smaller projects. So I'll be steering clear of that in the, in the future and we'll chalk this all up to experience and ensure that we're all safe. Be careful as well with tokens that you associate in your wallet. I'm a big advocate for using multiple different wallets in order to maintain your safety on any of these chains, not just Hedera. It goes the same for things like Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. For the love of God, use multiple wallets protect yourself and be careful with the dApps and DEXs that you interact with in the future. Ensure that they're safe. Safety is, of course, paramount. Anyway, guys, hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got something to say. I do and try and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.